Hey guys, me and Team here, and uh, this time I'm bringing you another two-on-two. -two. This is actually a, a Diamond League two-on-two. -two. I was promoted, even though I was using two-on-two -two for practice, from Platinum to Diamond. So now I'm Diamond in two-on-two -two and one-on-one, -on -one, although I'm much more lowly rated in two-on-two -two than one-on-one, -on -one, really, because I haven't played a lot of games yet. Anyway, my partner will be uh, random. I'm a big deal. A red Terran. Absolutely. And I'll be Blue Zerg. And we have Warback as a light blue Terran and Chairman Mao, the Dong, of the Purple Protoss. Oh my. Did anyone want to tell you that your neat unit sucks in Civ 4? Well, actually it doesn't. So, you should ignore them. Anyways, um, more, uh, Practice with Zerg, more practice just breaking out the rust after being away from the game for a week, and, you know, maybe trying out some of my uh, recording device, and getting used to one-on-one. -on -one. So there you go. Also one base Zerg play. So lots of uh, trying out going on here, which is why I'm not going back to one-on-one -on -one right away. I really want to get my feet wet, improve my uh, APM, or not really APM, but more so my macro than uh, beyond what it has been up to so far. Keep those resources accrued low while having sufficient saturation, I suppose. So, uh, there you have it. Anyway, I scout out both bases. I uh, do note the uh, two gate. This is why I went for a Roach Warren, because two gate usually uh, means some zealots can be coming in early on, and, well, you want roaches for that, not circlings. I did see the Terran uh, go with this stuff, but I don't know. I didn't really read too much from him yet. Uh, he didn't have the second bear except or anything. And Tech Lab's like, okay, maybe he's doing Reaper play, but that did just get nerfed, so we'll see. So I just sit on this, maybe get some preemptive thing. The other thing I started doing lately is just sticking a guy here. That way if they push out with some crazy amount of forces early, there is some reaction time for uh, dropping some spine crawlers in the base without them destroying them while they're building. So you, know, you can put up some defenses here. You know, Terran chose not to wall off, which I found interesting. That's kind of refreshing since most Terrans do so. And in one of my earlier videos when I was complaining that you know Terran always has the ability to wall off if they want it, someone was trying to convince me that there's no way they could defend themselves early and that Zerg would be an auto win against uh, Terran if they couldn't wall in. Which is just ludicrous because a lot of pro games involve early pressure where the Terran player doesn't wall in. So, yeah, that's horse crap and you know it. As for 1.1 changes, uh, I'm a little underwhelmed. I mean, it could have been worse. I was not happy that the only race that got a boost in their macro game was Terran. I don't see why the Terran needed easier barracks play using their reactors and tech labs when uh, the other races didn't get any macro, macro help at all, especially since Terran was one of the easier races to macro anyway. But, you know, if you play well, it did help out with the uh, balance a little bit. A little bit less early Reaper harass play at the higher levels, and a little bit less uh, total screw job from tanks. So, all in all, 1.1 might, uh, might be enough, but probably won't be. We'll see. You know, disparity at the higher level ladders is pretty high. But that's really not a Terran overpowered thing so much as it is just Zerg kind of sucking in the top 200 and in all the pro tournaments. So we'll see what that can do. Anyway, uh, Terran earlier, as you saw, called for a drop. Um, not too successful here. And they counter strike on the Terran. And I've been running one base Zerg, so all I have right now are roaches. And the yeah, Terran knew this, I guess, from his scanner sweep and went very Marauder heavy. So I don't, you know, and with concussive shells, he's just such a strong counter to Roaches. So unfortunately, I had to wait for my Hydras to uh, come into play here. And the DPS from the Hydras will be enough to take out this particular invasion force, especially since they have a little bit of a cover from the uh, Roaches. I really don't like Roaches. It's anything but avoiding early pressure from certain types of unit classes. So you'll see me usually transition away from them on a typical basis. And here I'm kind of proud of myself. I mean, look at that money. I'm, so I'm really spending everything I have. I'm getting upgrades. Yeah, I'm not too far behind, even on injections. I did have to make one creep tumor because I missed one injection. Still, you know, 15 energy at this point in the game. 10 minutes in. Could be worse. Could be worse. So if I can do that with two bases, maybe I'll be legitimately good. Who knows? So anyway, I come back here again. You know, same deal. 
they're going gateway units without uh, too much in terms of good sentry uh, control. So I'm not really too worried about this here. Unfortunately, stalkers are faster than hydralisks. So that's a little bit annoying. I don't know why the Protoss didn't invest in Blink, but you know what? Lucky me, I guess. No Blink for the Protoss. Terran sends more Marauders. I really think, uh, I don't know. They pushed us like without really knowing what we had, and we're kind of making them pay for it here. And they just keep coming. I don't know. And this time they walk into a pincer attack. I'll just move my forces out. And it's not perfectly timed, but with enough help from I'm a big deal here, it's going to be enough to, once again, hold them off. So we're looking pretty good here. And blue, red, well, we're only a little bit ahead, really, on uh, resources lost. And I could use a little bit more spending from the Terran player here. I mean, you have so many uh, you have so many barracks. Two of them are reactors. Get some marines out. It's not like the enemy has anything that's particularly great against marines. And it would have been useful if he uh, brought some heat earlier. And there we go. Now we're spending money. Yeah, look at that. He's got a lot queued up. Would like to see some more mule play from him as well. But uh, what can you do? I make a lot of mistakes myself, so I can't be too critical. And now the Terran on the other side. Yeah, you know, same problem. Why isn't he spending his money? I'm a little surprised to see this kind of thing from Diamond League. And Protoss is doing better. So, you know, it's kind of like the each side has one person spending his resources and one guy not doing it. But this guy is picking up an expansion, but so am I. <laughs> Alright, now Cuddle signs on and has a message for me. And Pro, Protoss, or Protoss, Zerg. Yeah, I, I'm kind of agreeing with that. I think, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, that's pretty much exactly what I was going to say. Uh, no, he isn't watching this live or anything. It's just, you know, he signed on and says hi. Too risky on a 6-pole versus Terran. But that's been my conclusion for a long time in one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, we lost the game 2-on-2 two two where we took someone out with a 6-pole. And then the Terran mowed us down with Marines and Marauders before we could recover and get anything that actually countered them. I could not get enough Banelings and they just took out Cuddle and me. Interesting to see the Terran go Hellions here, which supposedly counters Hydralisks. But they're not as hard of a counter to Hydralisks as they are to Zerglings. And again, I don't know what they're doing. They just walk right into a pincer attack. Anyway, Hellions uh, do get a bonus damage to Lights. They do do uh, bonus damage to, to Hydralisks. But with the Hydralisk range, which I'm working on that upgrade right now, but, you know, with the range that Hydralisks have, they would have to move in close to the Hydralisks in order to take advantage of their splash. And... That can be pretty fatal to attempt to do when you have like a wave of Hydralisks to move into them. You could easily lose low hit point Hellions while they're moving up. And normally Hydralisks aren't so great against Terran, but you know he, he didn't go mech. There's no tanks. There's no Thors. And really very Marauder heavy, and they're nothing special against Hydralisks either. I mean, 10 damage, they've less DPS by a significant margin. So in this particular case, uh, given the unit composition our enemies are going with the heavy stalkers, heavy marauders, it just, I, I kind of fell into Hydras, I don't know. If your enemy builds stuff that you know, can be countered by it, build it, I guess. Anyway, we're all securing expansion here, going a little bit into macro mode, I guess. Somewhat. Speed this up a little bit. Really, uh, nothing too special going on. I'm still cranking Hydra's upgrades. And, you know, Zerglings is a mineral dump. Ally calls, you know, asks if I'm ready. Interesting. Got the uh, stim packs. More Marines, more Marauders. So, really, our opponents didn't adjust either. Well, it works for me. I like it when my opponents don't adjust. And man, look at all those minerals and gas. What are you doing, man? Anyway, uh, we'll go back to units lost, or maybe I should go to APM. Let's show off our pro elite skills. Or something like that. <laughs> it's beautiful. I'm like the lowest APM player in this game. That is just awesome. <laughs> That's right. That's right, viewers. The Zerg is an A move race. You don't need to try with Zerg. Not at all. If only it were true. I did get to uh, range upgrade here, and although my upgrades aren't so hot, 
they're better than my opponent's upgrades. And uh, I repel the Terran, my opponent crushes the Protoss. Well, they didn't fight in a coordinated fashion at all here. So that will be good game. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm getting used to the one base third play, so hopefully I can bring you uh, gradually increasing quality play from here on out. Until then, the main team signing out.